5 to 1 over DC United. Tom Preskis has gained the goal position for DC, but he's still looking for his first leg of the starter. And DC United in their free third, 4 4 2. Diego Sonora not able to play due to injury. Terry Kelly will be the right back. Yamosa back from injury. Tom Fitzgerald has stepped in the middle of 96. One hands up. Ryan gets a snap for DC Jinks. And Thomas Longin came down from New England in big shoes to fill of Bruce Arena, but he is one win away from getting DC back to the cup for the fourth straight year. Ricardo Valenzuela, the man in the middle today. Tom Bobadilla and Greg Barkey will be the assistants. Cole Kimmel the fourth. Valenzuela has a reputation of a disciplinarian close to a red card a game. And in a game which we saw in game two where Columbus 30 fouls against United, Valenzuela could be busy today. Far side, Varzija. Early cross for Columbus. Stern John heads it down. Penalty spot. Williams cleared away by Echeverry, and they're going to call an early foul. Williams perhaps a little reckless charging in on El Diablo. One of the things DC United does gain by having Cherry Kelly in the right back position as opposed to Sonora, who's injured, is some strength in the air to counteract Stern John and Brian McBride because overall, the Columbus crew having a rather large advantage on high balls. Terry Talley, who stepped into the starting lineup in place of Diego Sonora, finds Moreno near side. Oh, it's Ben Olsen and a hard tackle from Ansel Elcock. Mr. Everything for the crew. Well, you mentioned Terry Talley. He had been starting in the center of the DC United defense in place of Yamosa, who is playing in his first playoff game after already having missed four. Echeverry to Olsen, to the corner, against Elcock. Echeverry wasn't quite sure he could get it there, and Williams, who had an amazing game, too, out there now. Echeverry dummies the offside, Olsen to the middle, Doherty coming out, and it's cleared across the end line for a corner kick. Echeverry was in an offside position, but... Andy Williams, who's been playing like a man possessed in the attacking midfield for the Columbus crew. He set up both the game tying and the game winning goals in game two for the crew. DeBrito to Elcock. Holton steps in front to steal it for United. Olsen. Echeverry. Lassiter screaming for the ball. Yagley did just enough to shut the angle down, but that is the lethal weapon for DC. Kind of funny when you consider Lasseter and Echeverry's abilities. Lasseter only one goal in the postseason. In fact, he's been practically shut down the second half of the campaign. The assist 
it basically went to Ansel Elcott, the Columbus defender, who sent a blind pass in front of the goal, and Lassiter slammed it home. Back to the turf. Lapper. Fuck! He was going to get whistled for the foul. Instead, it goes against Olsen. You can see what United's fans think about that. Olsen, a very aggressive player. He's wiry. He's not that big, but he doesn't back down. In fact, he's normally the aggressor as he was there. Thursday night, Dallas was already a goal down. Four minutes in. Burn never recovered. L.A. has clinched a spot in the cup. Who will face them? Olsen trying to make sure it's D.C. Etcher over to Brito. Beautiful control from the Cape Verdean. Not to the turf. Elcott. Three kick. Foul against Talley. You've been impressed with Talley's development this year. Talley's made huge strides from his rookie season last year. He was beaten by Stern John, though, on one of the goals. Actually, Stern John's second goal of the match in game two. Good play by Preston. And here is Talley. Great defensive lineup in North Carolina with Polk and Burholt. Here's McBride, and there is Polk. Not off of McBride's arm, unintentional, and out. Throw in D.C. Eddie Pope playing with a very sore left ankle. He had to leave the game at halftime in game two. Brian McBride here in game three. When we were at the same stage in 98, game three of the Eastern Conference Finals, Brian McBride had spent the night in the hospital. With, they weren't quite sure what it was, an allergic reaction, food poisoning, but he was subpar. I have to say already, though, he looks sharp today. Long throw from Elcott, looking for John. Polk backs up to head it away. Echeverry to Olsen. Back to Echeverry, who throws. Lapper wearing the captain's armband, finds McBride. Knocked to the turf by Tally, no call. Delayed call, advantage played, and Valenzuela gives Columbus an early free kick in dangerous territory. Valenzuela well, calling a very tight game. He knows he has a tiger by the tail. 45 fouls in game two. 30 of them called against Columbus. Marco left! Tom Prest is lining it up with the post. Marco, They're not where right. Prest wants. Right, Marco! Right, Marco! Garcia, a dangerous right foot. Slams it off of Williams. Moreno wins it to Echeverry, to Lassiter in full flight. Rounds Cunningham to the far side. Gagley backs off. Moreno screaming for the ball. Offside flag comes up just by a hair. Moreno jumping the gun just slightly. In behind the Columbus defenders when the ball was played to him by Lassiter. This is a very fast surface. I walked the field before kickoff, and it's a bit bumpy underneath as well. So we'll see whether D.C. can establish their precision possession game. Looking for McBride, gets ahead on it. Far side, Cunningham. Cunningham, back to the turf by Yamosa. Free kick, Columbus. An equal opportunity whistle today so far. So far, Columbus spending quite a bit of time in D.C. United's end of the field, trying to capitalize on the momentum that they gained from that lopsided victory in Game 2. That's against D.C. United's coach, Thomas Rogan's plans. Third shot from Clark. Well off target, and that will get the fans' attention. For the last three years, Marco Echeverry was D.C. United's MVP. In fact, last year, the MVP of the league. This year, Jaime Moreno, who just walked in front of him, stepped in front of him as well in the MVP ballots for D.C., but these two still up for the 1999 league MVP awards. Not easy to outshine a countryman like Echeverry. Throwing from the stripe. When I spoke with Thomas Ronga, the D.C. United coach, before the game, he said D.C. definitely wanted to play most of the game in Columbus's half of the field, but we haven't seen that yet. Garcia tripped up, packed in the heels. He's appealing for a foul, and it looks like he'll get it. 
Entering the 10th minute of play. No score. Game three of the Eastern Conference Finals. Double team on the far side, as you would expect. DC not wanting to be pushed around in this game as they were in game two. Trying to dish some out. Another cat, another kick. This time, Maisner whistle. Exeter also over there. And a yellow card against El Diablo. Free kick as the crowd continues to pour in. John DeBrito and Robert Barzina. DeBrito will take it. Off balance clearance. There were some pointed comments in the press this week between these two teams. Sir John quoted as saying he gave DC some of their own medicine in terms of the physical play. Off balance, Yamosa pulled to the turf. And a foul called against Stern John. So Yamosa's hand on Stern John. Stern John very strong. And it was actually Yamosa who pulled his jersey. John's reputation precedes him. Not known to be the shyest of forwards in the box. Gagley heads it high in the air. Echeverry comes away with it. Knocked to the turf by Barzia, and a card will come. Retaliation. It was not a particularly vicious foul, but you can see Valenzuela had his eye on that duo. Well, Valenzuela trying to preempt any big problems and tangling up his legs was Barzija. He didn't really play the ball. He knew he was going to go into Echeverry's legs. A bit harsh, the type of game this is, the referee trying to clamp down. Cunningham blocks the free kick. Lasseter pulled to the turf. And Barzija could have been a yellow if he didn't just get one. <laughs> 12th foul of the game so far, seven against the crew. Looking for Polk, cleared by McBride. Maisner back to the mix. Here's Polk. He has a knack for game winners. Maisner keeps it alive. Elcott, Polk, and Lapper with no pressure. Mentioned Thursday night's game three of the Western Conference Championship. The Galaxy won it three to one. They're at home right now, awaiting a trip to Foxborough. Flipped on to John. Prestis. Backed up. The flag coming up on the far side anyway. Offside the call. Well, that's one very direct form of attack by the Columbus crew, and that's to send the high ball in for Brian McBride. He's virtually unbeatable in the air. And he flicks the ball on into space, looking for one of the speedy counterparts, including Stern John up the center, or Jeff Cunningham over on that right side. Tally, Moreno, Echeverry, tries to dummy it through to himself, Williams. And Moreno gets it on the near side, Yagley out from the sweeper position to stop him. Tally, headed down by Clark, bicycle away by Elcott. DC starting to turn the pressure on. Good idea. Tally spin too much though, and no problem. For the revitalized Mark Doherty. Doherty, who was one of the best keepers in 96, even better in 99. Columbus's MVP and defender of the year. He fell short of the 96 playoffs. Will he get the chance in 99 to finally lift the cup? We'll find out. ABC next Sunday, 1.30. The Galaxy against two. We'll find out in about 90 minutes. Tally high in the air. Moreno slams in the back of DeBrito. 
Olsen clears it back. DeBrito for Columbus. A little chippy and a little sloppy here in the early going. 15 minutes down. Mark up the line for Cunningham. Hague is tripped up in the process. And a free kick for United. Etcheverry. A blast on a laser looking for Tally or Olsen, but neither could get up there to get it. Goal kick for Columbus. Well, D.C., without Diego Sonora due to injury, it was a bad tackle by Stern John very early in game two, which hobbled him. He's not been able to bounce back for the Columbus Crew. Brian Mazenoff out with a right groin strain. Jurgen Summer out for the season with another knee reconstruction, the other knee. And Thomas Dooley not available today for the Columbus Crew. We'll talk about that a bit later. Lasseter keeps it alive for United. Here's Moreno. On the run is Maisner down the flank. Moreno, soft touch. Maisner, early ball, looking for Lasseter. Lappers intercepts, and an off-balance shot for Moreno sails high. That's how quick United can strike. Moreno disappointed in the finish. He starts it well enough, getting it out to the left side. This ball, Lapper barely clears it. Our Lassiter might have had a clear chance. Moreno with the right foot on the half turn, not executing. DC coming into today with the best record in MLS in the regular season. They won the Supporters' Shield away from LA. Can they lift the MLS Cup in the process? Columbus right behind them in the East. Of course, right behind in MLS territories when you're talking about United could mean a different zip code. United 23 and 9, Columbus 19 and 13. And their big bugaboo getting swept by United this year. In fact, seven regular season games in a row have gone in DC's favor. And that 0 for 12, a huge gorilla on Tom Fitzgerald's back here at RFK. Lassiter in a foot race. Olsen supports. Yegley defends. Lassiter leaves it for Talley. Olsen flicks it on. Chested by Moreno. Looking for help. Echeverry. Moreno! coordination, combination play by the Bolivians. Mike Clark thinking maybe should have been in tighter on Moreno there, then he gets beat on the give and go. Lasseter a quick shot that Doherty had to go down for. You can see on the goal, Mike Lapper charging out to Echeverry. On second thought, Echeverry doesn't take many shots. He lost track of Jaime Moreno. Echeverry did it. 1-0 DC. McBride pushed to the turf, and Yamosa whistled for the foul. Seventh against D.C. That type of play, practically impossible to stop. The quick interpassing, the understanding between Echeverry and Moreno. Williams, John in the corner of the box. Elcock against Olsen. Double team. Tally pulled to the turf. The foul. Free kick, DC. A couple 
shoves off the ball between Olsen and Elcock. That's a good battle here on the near side. Brought down by Yagley. Near side Elcock. Outside of the boot. Cunningham against Vegas. The speed favors Columbus. Cunningham. Vegas knocks him off the ball. Whistle blows. Who is it against? Against Columbus. Well, this one tells you a lot. The game-winning goal in game two was Jeff Cunningham, who blew past both Jeff Vegas and Richie Williams. And Vegas not wanting to have any of that today. Stood up Jeff Cunningham in the one-on-one -on -one confrontation. DC is used to scoring first. They led the league in that category, winning 20 of the 24 games in the regular season. Columbus, however, not bad coming from behind. Second in the league, 8 and 11 when surrendering the first goal. But DC, a different animal. Less than 25 to go in the first half. Olsen slams it upfield. It's two on one. Yegley with Lasseter on one side and Echeverry in his face. DeBrito turning is Cunningham. It almost looks like DC have tried to lull Columbus's defense to sleep. Here's McBride. Agus. Foul called. Free kick. And a great chance for the right boot of Marcia to tie it up. Well, these last two games, there's been some tremendous physical battles between Jeff Agus and Brian McBride, including in the opening moment of game two. This time, Agus, the aggressor, in game two, McBride took Jeff Agus out, and these guys are very close buddies, teammates, with the U.S. national team. 16 fouls, and we haven't even reached the midway point of the first half. Crust is a yard off his line. The early lead. Debrito bangs off the wall. Second shot off of Vegas. Cleared to the near side. Columbus trying some trickery but couldn't get it on net. Yegley back into the mix. Off balance clearance. Echeverry picks it up. Moreno striding to midfield. Olsen with Lasseter on the run, far side. Off balance, perhaps getting a boot in the Columbus defense. The play never took off. A foul called by Valenzuela. Or offside called by the referee. I think Moreno, first of all, faster with the ball than he is without it. Then this is Olsen. He gets a bad hop. And a poor clearance here is blocked. Not a bad try there. Murray, I don't know what he was waving at. He was off his line and nearly got chipped there. Clark. Can't get it past Mason. Etcheville. Lasseter pushing it back up the old. Mazner dances around the challenge, but a foul called nonetheless, and Echeverry trying to, I guess, add a little color to his example that Columbus isn't giving the 10 yards. Twenty-two minutes left to go in the first half. Game three of the Eastern Finals. And Goldie forced to retreat to his line. The white colored jerseys, the Columbus crew defending the goal to the right, and the dark colored DC United moving from the left to the right, and quite efficiently, I might add, over the last 10 minutes or so. Stern John trying to keep it alive. Agus gets ahead to it through the double team and back to Preston. Bill Shane Tykea with you. LA awaits the winner of this game. Both conference championships going to the deciding three games. L.A. at home won on Thursday night to clinch a spot in the cup. Can D.C. duplicate the feat here today? Olsen down the line. Nice pass from Tally, but it bounds across the touchline and a throw in for Columbus. Well, we've seen it a couple times in the last few moments. Something critical for D.C. United at the back, particularly because Yamosa and Pope are not playing 
at 100% healthy. The fact that Jeff Hague is pitching in from the left side to back them up. And we've seen Kerry Talley win a couple of high balls in the box as he's come into the center to help. Ricardo Valenzuela will stop the clock. 20 minutes and change left to go. Yamosa striding forward to steal it. Echeverry. Williams forced to foul. Tenth foul of the game against the group. Game threes have not been kind to the visitors. Echeverry. Moreno somehow wide open. Handball. He tried to catch it on the shoulder too much of the arm and Columbus got a huge break there. Well on the goal Moreno brought a ball down beautifully on his chest and then set himself up for the give and go with Mark Wetcher. This time though pretty obvious that he reaches up with the right arm. A good call. One of the facts you might find out on Yahoo Sports MLS Cup 99 page. Home team's dominance in game three. This is the sixth time in MLS history and only that Dallas loss back in 96 to the Wizards. The only blemish, McBride flipping it on. Barzia charging down the middle. Hope. He doesn't look injured there. A highly motivated Eddie Pope taking his U.S. national team mate, Brian McBride, down. Barzia's early free kick to flex away and a corner kick coming for Columbus. The goal of the 17th minute. Moreno from Echeverry. Lethal corner kick chance. Back post McBride. Hope did not lose his mark. Williams off balance. Agus intercepts. Yegley got lucky. Williams on the turn. DeBrito quickly to Cunningham. Hope clears. Clark fights through Moreno and no foul call. Yagley. Williams on the turn against Williams. Andy against Richie in that battle. DeBrito intercepted. Lassiter stealing it away. Olsen to Lassiter banging it off of Lapper and again. Perhaps the tension tightening up a little bit on both teams. McBride with time. Maisner tries to clear. Andy Williams to the middle for McBride. Olsen clears up the line for United and here's Moreno the goal scorer. Gets past Lapper on his run. Moreno with Lasseter in the middle. Yegley stops that pass. Far side, Maisner trying to open it up, but it's cleared back to Olsen, and the volley attempt goes high and wide. Jeff Agus might have had a flashback. First time we were treated to see Jaime Moreno here at RFK. Back in the U.S. Cup, in a very similar play, Moreno took off. Agus did not catch up with him until Moreno had put the ball past Friedel in the net. Well, because of that, D.C. United now looking very dangerous on the counterattack. They have the 1-0 lead. Columbus pushing forward. When Moreno has the ball at his feet, there's no one in the league that could catch it. Elcott for John, intercepted by Yanosa. There's still plenty of time left in this one. Mentioned Columbus close to 50% when they surrender the first goal. Four pass attempts, and Barzia perhaps lucky to get another chance. In 96, it was Mark Simpson helping United to lift the cup. In 97, it was Scott Garland. Last year, Prest is victimized by the fire. So he's still looking for his first championship. Agus clears it out of play. Agus 
complete dealing with Cunningham's speed so far. Lapper. The burrito looking for Elcott to drive well offside. The stadium starting to rock. You can feel the press box shaking here at venerable old RFK. Lasseter pressuring Yagley and good work from the former college player of the year to get it back to his keeper. How about Ben Olsen beating Mike Lapper to that head ball? Lapper's very strong, very powerful, and also very good in the air, but Olsen just more aggressive. Williams bangs it off of his Columbus counterpart and out for the United Pro. Ben Olsen helped DC United through quite a bit of their adversity during the regular season, missing players through injury, missing players due to national team duty. Ben Olsen was the one constant. The burrito. One half hour gone, another hour remains. Time to find out who will face LA next Sunday at Foxborough. Cunningham on a foot race, tripped up, foul called. No, the referee keeps the whistle in hand and a little surprised on that one. Well, you can see the speed there by Cunningham, much like Jaime Moreno in black going the other way. Moreno, speaking of, I was going to say the devil, but someone already had that mind. Olsen to lose the tackle from Lapper, and Elcott tries to intercept. There are some difficult bounces out there on a very hard surface, a hard and fast surface with players having some trouble, like their Richie Williams, with their passing accuracy. Long pass for Etcherberry, Clark intercepts. Up the line, still in play. Here's Mazeman. Olsen off his shoulder, still in the box. Elcock clears. Columbus might have a little less difficulty in 99 than they did in 98, adjusting to the surface here at RFK with their beautiful new stadium. No tight confines of Ohio Stadium, but it's a different story when United is at home. You can just sense. It's, it's similar to Lambeau Field for the Green Bay Packers. You can just sense the tradition that United has built in such a short time. But it's also true that D.C. United, when they used to struggle at Columbus, used to blame the very small confines of the horseshoe at Ohio State. They didn't have that excuse in Game 2, losing 5-1 to one at the new Columbus Crew Stadium, which has plenty of space. They just weren't able to play their game because of a lot of physical play and aggressiveness by the Columbus Crew. And the Columbus Crew's speed, aggressiveness on the flanks, tore them up between Jeff Cunningham and Ansel Hel Elcock. DC had nothing to counter their getaway speed on the flanks. Well, what's not working for Columbus today? They have not worked the ball wide often enough to exploit that. And you've had it on the far side, as far as Cunningham's speed, you've had Agus having the help of John Mazur to try and contain that speed. They've almost double teamed Cunningham. Rowan Columbus, off of tally. Elcock. On the run is McBride, Elcock. A cannon throw, and Yamosa coming over to head it away. Elcock's been relatively quiet on this left side because Ben Olsen is playing so aggressively and getting forward into the attack. Stern John opens up. Yamosa again. Williams intercepts the clearance, and Barzia regains control. Here's Cunningham on the turn against Vegas. That is a matchup Columbus has to win if they want to win here today. Clark, dangerous ball, and right at the top of the six is Prestis. That is the weak point that Columbus thinks Prestis has. They need to try and get Prestis moving north and south. Lapper, beaten by Lasseter, rolls it far corner, side netting goal, 2 nothing D.C. And United in full flight.
A rough day for Mike Lapper. Look at this pass by Marco Etchenberry. He puts it into space behind Lapper. A little bit of contact there. Lassiter threw Lapper slightly off balance. A good finish with the outside of the left foot for Lassiter. He does prefer his left foot. He's got the inside track. He turns the corner. He accelerates. And he finds that far corner very accurately for Roy Lassiter. But Mike Lapper hasn't looked sharp in this game. A couple of his clearances have been suspect. He got turned around on a previous play. This time he could not cope with Roy Lassiter's speed and a perfectly placed through ball from Marco Echeverry. Olsen stops DC in control of this one. Lassiter, Moreno, back to Tallard. Far side from Olsen. The goal coming in the 35th minute. And quite an impressive performance here in the first half by D.C. Still in play. Columbus trying to get anything going. Quite a turnaround for the first five minutes in this game when the entire play was in D.C.'s defensive half. That's your very against Williams. Foul call. L.A.'s dominance over D.C. in the first half. So impressive. Galaxy fans were even calling the Revolution hotline for tickets to MLS Cup. You kind of wonder if United faithful are booking their trip to Foxborough after what United has done so far today. Tally far side for Agus. Excuse me, Galaxy over Dallas last week. Or the Thursday night. That's a very near side talent. Tried to fake out the defense, faked out Olsen in the process. Barzia. Mazur keeps it alive for United. Phil, we touted Marco Echeverry El Diablo as the dominant player in MLS over the last four seasons, and they've proven it today. Setting up both goals so far for DC United. Not only that, Important now for DC to maintain possession and keep Columbus out of the game. Echeverry holds the ball as well as anyone in MLS. And then maybe the next best guy at holding the ball in MLS is Jaime Moreno. So they can dictate the pace of the game, particularly when DC takes a lead. Echeverry takes charge, knocking the ball around, not letting the other team get any momentum started, and Moreno helps him. Mimosa stepping up from the defense to win it back for DC. Mazur to Williams. A total team effort from United. Elcock chests it down. You wonder if this might be the crew's last chance. At least with this crew of players. McBride. Brian McBride signed up for the next several years through the 2002 World Cup at least. But all the talk about Stern John, perhaps Ansel Elcock moving on and What's going to happen with Thomas Dooley, and how many more years does Robert Varzija have left? Dooley's already gone. He's not here today for the Columbus crew. Olsen. Far side, Mazner is open. And back to Etcher there. Olsen through the legs of Lapper. A little bit of pushing and shoving, but the referee giving Columbus some leeway. McBride racing against Talley. Still in play near side. McBride chips. Prestis retreats, and Stern John can only look on in frustration. Tremendous hustle by Brian McBride along this near sideline to keep the ball in play and get past Terry Talley. His cross just a little bit off the mark as he was trying to target Stern John. But reportedly, Thomas Dooley is in Germany getting a coaching bench, attending coaching school. And there's another report that Dooley even met with the Metro Stars. I take that back, met and spoke with Lothar Mateus, who will join the Metro Stars. Dooley potentially going there as the coach. Mazner to the middle for Agus. Near side Olsen. And if you think about it, Dooley probably played against Mateus in Germany 20, 25 times over the course of his career, so they are familiar with each other. Williams, Etcheverry, the D.C. captain harassed by Andy Williams. Columbus has not given up, but they just can't find the answer to the D.C. puzzle. And 
Tom Fitzgerald can only look on in frustration. Olsen still down. Moreno to Echeverry to Olsen and he just recharged the batteries. Lapper sticks ahead in dangerous play as Moreno lifted his boot. Six minutes left to go in the first half of play and Moreno's goal in the 17th minute. The deciders so far, Lassiter double the lead. Some 18 minutes later. Andy Williams, McBride, pushing up from right back to his part. He's still near the DC end. Lapper is pinched over to keep an eye on Lassiter in the process. Clark down the line. Nice run coming in. Cuts inside of Mason. Tries to drop it around Richie Williams. And the workhorse got a boot on it. Echeverry offside. Lassiter. If Echeverry had done it first touch, Lassiter was off to the races. Echeverry again looking to spring his speedy forwards, whether it be Moreno or Lassiter. The speedy forward on the right side for the Columbus Crew, Jeff Cunningham, has nearly shaken loose on several occasions. You called it correctly there, Phil. It was Richie Williams coming over to really do part of someone else's job and pitch in, and that, that's been a big difference for D.C. Well, when Thomas Rongan was the head coach of New England, he said that Williams was just as valuable to D.C. as Moreno and Echeverry. Here's Moreno in the middle is Lasseter. Off-balance volley. Looked like he might have taken that on the shin, and Doherty breathes a huge sigh of relief. McBride with Pope all over. McBride turns inside of Olsen. Foul card coming out against Eddie Pope. Columbus has several players who would be in danger of missing the cup, so they get a yellow. The only player for D.C. right now who is in danger is Jeff Archer, and he's not even playing yet. I thought maybe Olsen caused the foul here. Initial contact here by Eddie Pope. But it's Olsen that ends up dumping McBride to the turf. But Pope, because the challenge was from behind, does get the yellow card. It looked like he gave it to Pope for the challenge from behind, even though it was Olsen who finished the job and sent McBride down to the ground. Clock stopped, 4 14 left to go on the first half. Andy Williams. This is where Columbus can be dangerous. Corner kick. Remember the game in Miami earlier this year? Garcia to McBride twice. They could use that right now. Well, remember game three between Chicago and Dallas, when Chicago took a 2-0 lead in the first half. Dallas had the cockball coming back to win that one. No Barzia on the corner. Well, actually, they're trying a little trickery as DeBrito backs out. Lapper couldn't turn it on target. You cannot count the Columbus crew out of this game. As dismal as their prospects appear at this point, particularly because Edgeway looks so, so dynamic and so sharp. But the fact is, when you've got players like Stern John, who only had a hat trick against DC United last week, Brian McBride, the speed of Jeff Cunningham, the playmaking and dribbling of Andy Williams in the midfield, the speed of Elcock on the left side. This Columbus Crew team is worth at least a goal here before it's over. Almost went through for John, and somehow Eddie Pope stopped it with an off-balance touch. Pope might be trying out for the New York City Ballet after that pirouette. Less than three minutes left in half number one. Demosa heads it away into safety and a throw in for Columbus. What a play by Pope. Hangs the cross in, does Cunningham across the end line, corner kick. Vegas. Clark lifting it through. Here's a chance for Garcia. Beautiful defense by Mazman. Two minutes left. 
inside the spot again. It's Lapper. And it looks like they're going to say Yamosa. Actually, Terry Talley got a flick on, and they'll swing to the near side and try it again. Talley got crushed by Lapper. But if Talley wasn't there, Lapper would have had a clear avenue to the goal for the header. Near post guard and Williams to the spot. Cleared by Agus. The Brito, Cunningham, and Clark and Schwer and John both would have been offside and they knew it. How about this throw to the center line by Preston? Good way to start a counterattack. That's your area against Williams. And again, you said Williams playing like a man possessed. He has not given up yet for Columbus. And there's still 46 minutes more to go. John Cunningham. 60 seconds left in the first half of play. Well, when you've lit up a team for five goals in the previous match, you, you have to believe that you can make some goals happen again. Sally, a nice place. Lock is whistled for a foul as they try and force it down United's throat. Well, I guess you could say Lassiter's skid has stopped. 14 goals the first 15 games. Only five in the next 21. Well, now he's scored in two straight and two pretty big goals. Today, a huge one. 30 seconds left to go. Agus far side with less than 20. Still in play, Agus, and finally dribbles across the far sideline with 10 seconds. Oh, Jeff Cunningham on that far side for Columbus has scored in three consecutive playoff games, so he could keep his streak going in the second half. And that will do it for the first half of play as United playing like the past champions that they are. Two of the prides of Tawichi. Roy Lasseter. One of the most prolific scorers in U.S. history. Mazner just could not bring it down. No substitutions to start the second half. Crew now moving from the left to the right in the second stanza. And the black and white of D.C. United defending the goal to the right. And good defense by Jeff Agus as he dummies that one out of play for the throw. Terry Talley in the starting lineup at right back. Ubusuku Abukasumo, one of the Columbus crew substitutions loosening up. Jason Farrell, Rob Smith, Brian West, the other three, and all three of those have some ability to turn on the speed. Here's DeBrito to Yeagley. Brito under pressure, difficult ball that Doherty, ha Doherty handles easily. Olsen, Lassiter, Olsen. You can sense a hush settling over RFK as Tally to the middle. Lassiter tried to tuck it in, but he was sandwiched between Debrito and Yeagley. Well, Columbus is going to have to live on the high wire here. We're gonna take some risks looking to get back into this game, which is gonna leave some openings for the likes of Roy Lasseter. His quickness, able to seize opportunities and get into spaces or gaps in the true defense. 0 for 12, and Roy Lasseter, one of the big reasons DC has had success here at RFK against Columbus. And that what you talked about in the first half, the crew getting to the flanks, stretching the field, and trying to whistle balls in from the flanks against Tom Prestis and company. They have to do that, and there is still plenty of time left. Amazing. Agus was off, at least he thought so. DC playing in the 4-4-2 that they prefer. Now they had the biggest problems in game two, when Eddie Polk went off with an injury at halftime. 
had the swollen ankle and had to switch into a 3-5-2. That opened the flanks up for the Columbus crew, that speed that you're talking about. But today, if you look here on the left side, Jeff Agus, with help from Mazur, have contained Cunningham. Even Richie Williams has come over. On the other side, Kerry Talley up against Elcock has had a lot of help from Ben Olsen, and that's made the difference, too. A little bit of a tactical switch as Doherty fighting for the ball near the 18th clears it out of play. Because this year, because of the personnel, Thomas Rondon switched to more of a 3-5-2. The formation they're playing out there today, very similar to what Bruce Arena won two cups with. There's Rondon up for coach of the year. Siggy Schmidt from L.A. also in the running. Along with Dave, Dallas's Dave Durr and... Well, Schmidt and Rangan have some other hardware on their minds. Doherty just snares it out of midair. Olsen looking very enterprising there. It was a Jaime Moreno through ball. Garcia. John and McBride, but they can't get past Polk. Nice play by Williams. Follows it up with an even better one. Knocked to the turf, that's a foul, and Olsen lucky not to come away with a card. Here's Moreno with some space to look up, he plays the ball perfectly behind the defender, Yegley. Olsen not getting enough on it as he was reaching. Clark. Cunningham, Garcia. Clark. Cunningham with Agus on his tail. Cuts inside of the D.C. defender, but Agus already had position, no foul call. Moreno tripped up by Varzia, and the Polish international playing with a card. Two goals down, 38 minutes left to go. Columbus has to pull out all the stops. There is no tomorrow in 1999. Nice play, bicycle goal! Echeverry, Moreno, Lasseter! Well, that one could be enough to send D.C. United to their fourth consecutive MLS Cup Final. The flick on by Jaime Moreno and the over the head, the bicycle by Roy Lasseter. Moreno backing in, knows Lasseter's in the center. Lasseter lays down, gets the left foot to it and keeps it down. A very difficult shot, in fact, to keep from going over the bar. But perfectly executed by Lasseter. What awareness by Jaime Moreno to get the ball into Echeverry started the play. Third assist of the game for Marco Echeverry. Well, shades of 98 when in game three, the Columbus crew fell 3-0. Here's the third goal. That's just wonderful acrobatic talent exhibited by Roy Lassiter and when you're a finisher a specialist a goal scoring specialist you find a way to put the ball into the net and despite having his back to the goal Lassiter was able to turn the tables and put it in and you can sense they're turning the lights out in Columbus right now and I think the gorilla just gained about 10 pounds 36 minutes left to go in regulation. An impressive performance by L.A. against the Burn on Thursday. Equally impressive here tonight. D.C. against Columbus. Still in play as a tight ropes around the line. Tackled by Maisner. Echeverry to Moreno. Almost the entire lower bowl of RFK. The fans on their feet. DC putting on a show here today. I was just going to say it's showtime. It's either that or you might see some physical play out of frustration from Columbus. Tally 
bending ball for the corner, but off target. Roy Lassiter, since he joined MLS, nearly 100 goals, 93 of them. That's a very so delicate with the left foot, dropping the ball into Moreno between two defenders. Moreno seeing Lassiter the whole way. Another thing of beauty created by DC United and their genius, Marco Echeverri. Here's Varzia. Cunningham. Cunningham against Agus. And DC just putting bodies into the attack. Foul called against the crew. Let's take a look at it. We still have another week to go, a week and a day, till we head to Foxborough. Brian West, by the way, taking off the warm-up for Columbus. And Jeff Onger loosening up the midfield defender for DC. What a ball by Etchenberry. Laser guided. Close to a hat trick for Lassiter. Is it too early to start talking about how the Galaxy match up with United? Clark to the middle for DeBrito. Yeagley. DeBrito to Varzina. Long ball for Clark. Gets ahead to it. Pressed us off his line. He has not been tested much today. The Columbus defense equally as impressive as the Columbus, uh, the DC defense equally as impressive as the DC attack. Garcia. Doherty to the near side. Here's Alcock. Yamosa over McBride. Cunningham. Elcock in the box. Shot off balance. Agus just threw enough body in. Goal kick, DC. Well, we talked about the speed on the flanks that Columbus has yet to exploit. This time, Elcock from Mike Clark hesitates just enough before taking the shot. Line Jeff Agus to cut his angle and even bump him slightly. Rest on for Williams, not for a lack of effort, but Andy Williams' day will end on a down note. Brian West, under 23 star on the U.S. national team, and a former Virginia teammate of Ben Olsen. And he gets a chance on the break as the flag stays down, but Yamosa, that's why Benny Say is the best defender in MLS. Yamosa, probably the most consistent and disciplined defender in MLS. Paisner making a foray down the five side. Olsen chips it on the shot. By Maisner, it hits side netting. Maisner started that play. Box high in the DCN. Tremendous workload undertaken by Maisner on the left. Olsen on the right. Olsen looking up and trying to target. Maisner at the back post. Maisner not quite reaching it after covering a lot of real estate in the meantime. Maisner picked up from Miami after the fusion. Got him from D.C. in the expansion draft. Coming along with Chris Albright, a bright star in the making, currently sidelined by injury. For Brian Kamler, a first-round pick, and future considerations. And many of those considerations swirling around Roy Lassiter. This might be Lassiter's last game here at RFK. And if so, what a way to go out. Here's Moreno. Outside Olsen. Delicate chip. Lassiter! Well, it's not the strongest part of his game, but that left foot has proved to be lethal twice tonight. Lassiter with the hat trick, staring him straight in the face. A Ben Olsen one-time cross. Lassiter entirely missing the target there. 
Here's DeBrito with Williams out. He'll have to step up further into the midfield. If Lasseter did have the heading ability, he'd be a lock for the men's national team from the United States. Stern John to Jeff Cunningham. Cunningham at the edge of a boxing. It's like DC has built a wall on the 18 that Cunningham just cannot break through. One hour gone, 30 minutes left to go, and for all intents and purposes, United playing like the Eastern Conference champions, and until Columbus can knock that crown a little askew, it is all D.C. as the stands pounding on the far side. Barzija's shot sails wide. Impressive turnout from United's faithful. And they are in full voice here today in D.C. Barzija. William Steeles. Lassiter. Moreno. Moreno. Oh, ole. The Brito coming back to win it. Nest against Jimosa. They're going for a pure speed here. And they still can't get past Jimosa. Carlos Jimosa has missed four weeks due to a sprained medial collateral ligament in his knee. They told him he'd be out four to six. He said, I'm coming into this game, and I'm going to stop Stern John. Not only has he stopped Stern John, he's stopped just about everybody else for the Columbus Crew attack. Clark chipping it into the area. No one even bothers to make the run. Six foot four, Prestis has a little advantage in the air. D.C. and L.A. split their season series. Perhaps a little ironically, they both ended up winning on the road. Through ball for Moreno. Doherty off his line. Back on June 19th, the Galaxy won here at RFK by a 2-1 score. Seeing Fuegos' last second free kick. Remember the controversy swirling around that one with the clock stopped. Here's Moreno. Lasseter with Olsen open. Olsen, just wide of the target. Go back to 98. What a rivalry these two teams have had. The Eastern Conference Finals last year, game two was a 4-2 victory by Columbus. They totally dominated back at the Horseshoe at Ohio State. But then two goals from Lasseter, one from Agus, and a 3-0 win in game three. This is like the carbon copy. The burrito to the outside. Here's McBride, a rare touch. Olsen coming away with it against West. The former Cavalier teammates, nothing Cavalier about that. Third game from the end of the regular season. September 25th at the Rose Bowl, a 2-0 win by the bench of D.C. as United preparing for the CONCACAF Champions Cup. So these two teams have an interesting matchup coming up next weekend at Foxborough unless something really strange happens over the next 26 minutes. Namely three goals by the crew. Right now they settle for a shot. But what's shaping up, Phil, is a storied matchup. The LA Galaxy, DC United going back to the inaugural season of MLS and quite a few players still left on those two teams to try and relive history. Over everyone and back to Doherty.
offside against Columbus. Free kick upcoming for DC United. Things started out early here today. Maybe not as early as Thursday night at the Rose Bowl. The DC with two goals in the first half of play. And then the acrobatic overhead scissor by Lassiter to make it 3 0. Over Maisner, over Varzia, and over the touchline. Throw in for Columbus. There have been a lot of changes in the Galaxy locker room, but as you mentioned, Ty, plenty of people to remember 1996 and the 2-0 lead that was whittled away in the final 10 minutes before Eddie Pope's overtime heroics. Foul against DC. Robin Frazier, Greg Van E, Mauricio Cienfuegos, and Kobe Jones, four stalwarts in the Galaxy lineup, have been with LA all the way. And Jorge Salcedo reacquired this year. Here's McBride. Can he get something going? No, says Gary Talley. Almost the entire DC starting lineup is still around. Cleared by Avis. Garcia deflects off Yamosa. And Prestis will grab it. Avis, Echeverry, Moreno, Pope. Mark Simpson and Richie Williams all still here while John Maisner and Clint P.A. were picked up again this year. They'd like to relive those memories while L.A. would like to change the way that story ended. For the players of note missing for D.C. United from 96, John Hartz since gone on to the New England Revolution, and Tony Sané now playing pretty regularly with Hartha Berlin in the Bundesliga in Germany. Jason Farrell, former A-League All-Star with Seattle out there now for Columbus as the ball sails into the D.C. box. And again, Tom Prestis, more than man enough for that. Jason Farrell, 28 years old, out of Seattle, Washington, picked up in a trade for Frank Klopas. Put Frank into Chicago and perhaps somewhat Ironically, Klopas's overtime goal gave Chicago the Open Cup last year against Farrell and Columbus. Echeverry almost freed Williams. Olsen. Moreno to Echeverry. 22 and a half minutes left to go in the game, and on the run is Olsen to the middle. Doherty in perfect position. Olsen has even stepped it up. Here in the second half compared to his performance in the first, which wasn't bad at all. Garcia tries to switch fields and carry Talley. Well, Talley cut out a ball there. A moment ago, Eddie Pope cut out a pass up the center. And he's done this three or four times in this match because of good position and good anticipation. Stern John, top of the box. Cunningham brings it down. Cunningham to the left. Agus just shuts down the shot. And the roars of Goose from the stands at RFK. Cunningham, Elcock with a little bit of space. Agus pays the price. Yamosa and Pope collide, and Prestis picks it up, and... You can tell Thomas Ronkin's heart went into his throat on that collision. Prestis clears across midfield. Let's take a look at our Budweiser scoring summary. Moreno in the 17th. Can Stern John add his name to that tally? Well, you can keep that one in the fridge. Lassiter in the 34th and 55th. And Marco Echeverry credited with an assist on each of those three goals. Stern John credited with a hat trick in game two. Died with less than 20 minutes left to go in their season, it looks like. An impressive season nonetheless for the crew, but a championship will have to wait till the next millennium. Cunningham, hard tackle by Agus, but clean. 
Moreno. The ball back off of Bunch Boot. Williams trying to find a space in the middle of the park as Echeverry takes the cross. That's got to be one of the scariest thoughts as a defender, one-on-one -on -one with Marco Echeverry. Yeah, he was toying with Clark a little bit there. Nice run by Barzia. Farrell brings it down. Stern John tries to get the ball through Eddie Holt, but can't. The drive in full pursuit. Beautiful pass off the outside of the boot to Moreno. That's your bit. Yeagley steals it. Pushing up from the sweeper spot, finds Brian West into the box. Right footer to the middle, and Yamosa there again as John collides with Tally, and Agus not to the turf. They can't even get a shot. Stern John's attempt two minutes ago, his first shot of the game, and he couldn't even turn that one on target here. Well, as sharp as Eddie Pope has been, and as well as he's played, I think the defensive MVP of this game has to be Carlos Yamosa. Stern John completely frustrated. So different from game two when he was able to tear up DC for a second half hat trick. Brian West in the clear here, trying to get the ball to Stern John. It's Yamosa sliding in. Again, perfectly positioned. He's so disciplined. He clogs up the holes for DC at the back. Lasseter against Lapper. And Lapper just gets it away from Olsen. Foul called against DC. Give the referee credit what could have been a very ugly game considering these two teams' history and what happened in game two has been kept in control, except on the scoreboard. 17 and a half. Cunningham, nice work with Clark. Garcia screams for the ball. Right foot across, back post. McBride, chest, McBride shoots, McBride just wide. Well, Brian McBride, a big part of some of the success that the U.S. men's national team has had this season. You see his ability to take a ball out of the air, control it perfectly behind the defender, and then strike. This is the target here. And he's up against, with Yamosa back after four weeks out with an injury, D.C. United having three of a possible four backs that would start for the U.S. national team at this time. I'll tell you what, the way Kerry Talley's played this year, he's going to get an invite. He well, might not be starting anytime soon. Well, well, we'll get a look at probably the fourth one, Robin Fraser of the LA Galaxy, next week, and it'll probably be D.C. up against him. Echeverry against Elcock. Yes, he can play defense. Elcock down, and on that shot, he might have sprained his ankle. Tremendous instincts here. Echeverry coming back. All right, he's the offensive star of this game, really. Assisting on all three DC goals. But he's coming back and winning defensive battles as well. Yagley tries to win the ball back for Columbus with 16 minutes left. Williams. Nice turn by Olsen. Leaves Farrell, or actually Garcia, in his way. Williams. A rare miscue by the former Virginia Cavalier. Chance for McBride at midfield. Well, Williams, other than a few good defensive plays, especially in the first half, has not looked especially sharp, and nor did he in game two. One of the problems for DC in game two was a Richie Williams who had a subpar game. He does get it done, though, as Echeverry with Williams in the middle. We'll use him. 11 national championships and international, kind of the Inter-American Cup for Williams as a player, and he's looking for the dozen next Sunday, it looks like. Uh, Lassiter rolling up the ankles of Jeff Cunningham. Good year for Cunningham, 12 goals. Not the way he'd like it to end, though.
Oh, he looked so dangerous on several runs in the first half. Couldn't quite break through. With so much speed with the ball at his feet. McBride back on defense. Cunningham forces it free. Elcock to Cunningham. Nice work by Columbus. Better work by Olsen. Who will get a throw in. 14 minutes left. You get the idea that Ben Olsen likes to crash into other players. He seems to seek out. A second ball on the field. That's why the whistle blows. And they'll take the throw over. Throw in over. Metchavari continuing to be so dangerous with any free kick into the box. Those are deadly, deadly driven balls from the left side. Next Sunday at Foxborough Stadium, 1.30 Eastern, the Galaxy face, it looks like, United for the MLS Championship. You can see it on ABC Sports, singing the national anthem and a special halftime performance from Christina Aguilera. But the way D.C. and L.A. have played over their respective game threes, there'll be plenty of fireworks during the 90 minutes as well. No problem for Doherty. Which team do you think has the advantage going in? Psychologically, you'd guess D.C. They know how to win. Headed back by Yamosa. Preston's an acrobatic run. On the other hand, there's that payback factor for the L.A. Galaxy. They were so close to winning it in 96 with that 2-0 lead late in the second half. Also, they feel like last year they were robbed. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena hosted MLS Cup 98 and in heartbreaking fashion the LA Galaxy failed to make, make it to the final game last year. Have a little bit of help from Mauricio Sanfuegos in the midfield as well and Roy Myers than they did in 96. Well they don't have Armist though. Garcia. Phil. West. Rolls it through to McBride, forces it through the defense, but Yamosa there to clean up the deal. And here comes Olsen. Etcheville. Olsen. Lassiter was not quite expecting. I think he was still mesmerized by Etcheville. I think Lassiter wanted to play in that keep away game. I don't think he really wanted to go sprinting after a ball up the line. 3-0 D.C. 11 and a half to go. Can McBride change the scoreline? Hope. Back to the turf, but a foul against Columbus. An outstanding composure exhibited there by Eddie Pope to shut Brian McBride off from that ball and give credit to McBride for not quitting. He's still looking for a goal to try and make this a real game. At the moment, it looks like the inevitable will take place. D.C. proceeding to their fourth consecutive MLS Cup final. Rob Smith coming in, perhaps a reward, although there is still time, and I know in, deep in the hearts of the crew, there is a miracle waiting to happen. Rob Smith, former South Carolina Gamecock, more of a defensive substitution, but he does have speed. Cunningham. Tally and Yamosa almost had a meeting of the months. Farrell had a go. Now the ball boys turn. Far side, the Barra Brava and the Screen Eagles. Plenty to cheer about today. How many of them will be headed on the road up to Foxborough? I can guarantee it quite a few bus loads from D.C. Accepted by Maisner, Hutchivari to Moreno again, and just a stride offside. Ten minutes left in Game 3 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Well, Columbus now without Andy Williams in their midfield. I think our handicap in terms of playmaking 
He wasn't able to do much in this game before he came out. Stern John to the end line. The flag comes up on the near side by the assistant. The ball crosses the line and a goal kick for Tom Prestis. And without Andy Williams in the lineup for Columbus here in the latter stages, I think there's less chance of Columbus being able to open, open up D.C. United's defense. Williams, very good distributor of the ball. He set up both the game-tying and game-winning goals in game two, but that's him on the end of the bench. Tilly like Thompson. Little, he's shivering a little bit, Andy Williams, as would uh, you would expect from a reggae boy. You can see Jurgen Sommer, the expected starting goalkeeper for the crew. Will he be back next year in healthy? Recovered from one ACL, only to pop the next one in his first game back. The practice before it, nonetheless. Open near side is Cunningham. McBride. Stern John slams into Yamosa, but Maisner there to clean it up. There's Tally. Long ball and Doherty, five yards, ten yards outside of his area. Smith with time. Ole. Oh, he went for another one. Smith with two nutmegs. Can I get the ball past Richie Williams cleanly and Etcheverry again back on defense. Well, if you can't win, at least you can go for nutmeg. Here's Cunningham. Always been my philosophy. <laughs> Long ball to Moreno. He scored the first. It would be the game winner. Lasseter lurking in the middle, waiting for the hat trick. Moreno stops, pops. Lasseter side volley. Oh, so close to a fourth. Well, an underappreciated ability or talent in soccer is the ability to put on the brakes. I don't know if anybody in MLS does it better than Moreno. Watch him just toy with Yegley here. Arr! Street to the brakes. Again, a double change of pace. And really, Lasseter should have done better with that serve from Moreno. Tally does a nice job to clear it away. Pope again reaching out those long legs. He scored the game winner in 96, a golden goal. Will he be the hero again in 99? He has today. One of many. Well, Pope has been ably assisted by Carlos Chimosa. What a tandem they are in central defense for Thomas Rongins, D.C. United. Tom Fitzgerald. Somewhere in his mind, he's thinking about 2,000. There's got to be a game plan out there to beat D.C. here. Garcia pushes it up the line, not to the turf in the process. Well, at this point, Tom Fitzgerald and the Columbus crew, their way of beating D.C. might be to trade for Echeverry and Moreno. Maybe well, for a comeback here, maybe Ariel Graciani is uh, available at the moment. Well, he was the hero in game three of the Western Semis. Maisner pulled to the turf. Maisner not perhaps the defensive gem that a John Harts could be, and even a Tony Sane, but he does have some offensive flair, and he gives you another weapon on a team that's loaded with him. And he will give you a lot of work rate. One of the reputations that he had under Bruce Arena is he was not a 90-minute player. He has turned that around in 1999 under Thomas Rongen. Davis. Williams. Moreno. Five minutes left. Lasseter, Moreno again stops in a dime, tripped up, whistle, foul call, you could see the referee was thinking, was the foul significant enough for what he called a handball, 
Unfortunately for Columbus, it is another break in favor of United. Moreno's balance and composure on the ball. Good combination work with Lassiter as well. Hutchiner. Hutchiner, the mastermind. Moreno just too slippery. Too good at standing up defenders. They have a few tricks up their sleeve. Many of them involve number 12, Jeff Vegas. But Exeter will take it himself. And salt in the wounds. What a goal! Look out, L.A. This place is going nuts. A blessed left foot. It actually deflects off of a Columbus defender, leaving no chance for Doherty. But Echeverry, that might have been going in anyway. Doherty may have touched it on the way in and had it not been deflected by a defender out in front. Barziha, I think, changing the direction slightly, putting it totally out of the reach of Mark Doherty. Carry tally through by Moreno. Doherty off his line with less than four minutes left. Is someone just born with that sort of ability in their left foot? You don't see it very often. Hayes. A laser pass to Echeverry. Hayes that picks up the clearance. And here is El Diablo near side. Rifles with crossing. No bend on it. And Doherty snares it. That's a very finely missed hit one down. Stern John. Not the way he would like to end the 99 season. Handball, no call. Well, that legendary stroke with that left foot. It's such a thing of beauty. It's like a Tiger Woods golf swing or a Mark McGuire baseball swing. Two forty left to go. Can they at least get the pride goal? Lapper back to Yegley. A wasted attempt on a free kick, a set play for Columbus. And another chance. Two ten left. Marco Echeverri, a goal and three assists today. I think he's ready for the cup. Shot, saved by Prestes. I think, as Kevin Payne, in charge of D.C. United, looks on. I think you could say that Tom Prestis answered a lot of questions today. Kevin Payne in the running for executive of the year. In fact, I think D.C., everything but rookie of the year, they have a candidate in, and they have to be considered one of the leading candidates in every single category for the year-end honors. Well, Kevin Payne had the foresight to hire Bruce Arena as his first coach for D.C. United in that inaugural season of MLS in 96. He was under some criticism for hiring Thomas Rogan to take over for Bruce, Bruce Arena at the end of last season. Garcia chipped to the near side. Here's Cunningham against Davis. And a veteran defender wins that battle. On the other end, a smile on his face as you look at the right side of your screen. For Lamar Hunt, the crew owner. Stern John cannot turn the shot towards goal. 
There's Payne and to the right, Omar Hunt and the MLS Commissioner Don Garber in the picture as well. Shot off balance, save again, Prestis. The Commissioner here to hand out the Eastern Conference Championship trophy, and a trophy that is well deserved by United based on the performance today. You can see the little smile from Lamar Hunt. This is a guy who has turned into quite a soccer fan. And it is still a storied year for Columbus on what has happened in Central Ohio in 99. Well, Lamar Hunt hasn't turned into a soccer fan. He's involved in soccer since the 1960s with the Dallas Tornado in the North American Soccer League. Ten seconds left. The building of the stadium, the naming of the Cup Trophy. But tonight, it is D.C. United. Eastern Conference champions and on to MLS Cup 99.